Hi, this is Mesh Rundown. Enjoy watching movies as much as we do. Subscribe and hit the like button down below. Today we're going to be doing a movie review on This Is Not A Burial, It's A Resurrection. The movie is directed by Lemohang Jeremiah Mosese. It stars Mary Twala as Montaya and Jerry Moffa King as the narrator Wa. The story revolves around a widow named Montaya and her journey through life. Because at this stage when the movie takes place, she's 80 years old. She has experienced a lot of death in her lifetime. And in the beginning of the movie, she actually loses her last family member, which is her son. And if that's not bad enough, she actually finds out that the village is going to be flooded to make a dam. And so she has to move and a whole village has to move. And this, in some aspects, gives her a will to continue. You know, in some ways, I would argue. Because yeah. she helps the town form a petition against her. They write letters to counsellors. Essentially, they look at how to deal with loss. So I'd say there are a few themes in this movie. The main theme is death. How to deal with death, how to prepare for your own death, how to deal with not only the death of an actual physical person, like a loved one, but also the death of a way of living, the death of a village, of everything you actually know and have learned your whole entire life. This theme of death is constant throughout the movie, even in the death of the village where they have to move. There's a focus on the dead because they have to dig up their dead to take them away to bury them somewhere else because you can't have the dead floating up from shallow graves. It would be negative. <laughs> they just keep this constant theme of death going through up until the very end when there's a resurrection. And I think it's important to re remember that in a lot of African traditions, your dead are still important in your daily life because they're ancestors. So a lot of people would want to take the dead with them and not just leave them behind. And the death is also further emoted through the music and the score and her acting because during certain scenes there's just this absolute turmoil and sadness and they play on that quite a lot in the movie to a point where at times you can get uncomfortable yourself, or at least I did. Definitely. The death of the community is brought about by a advancement in technology and advancement towards being modern away from traditional values let's move into the city let's flood our village basically and because we'll have a nice dam then and we can have modern stuff we don't need to be agriculturally driven we can go into the cities and we can make money like that so again we've got this movie shows this nice conflict between traditional values and progressing towards modern living yeah. And I think what's important to remember here is that even though it's difficult for one or two villagers to give up their space for the dam, it's something that is overall going to uplift the whole entire country or at least large areas in the country. So even though it seems cruel at times, sometimes you give up a little bit, which is actually a lot because, you know, you grow up in these places, but you do it for the betterment of a lot of people. From start to finish, the filmmaking was superb, and you could see the contrast of the modern versus traditional by the clothes that everybody wore, because you could see the modern people, the invaders almost, were in suits, and they were dressed in modern Western clothes, where the people we were rooting for, the community, were basically in their traditional garb most of the time. So that was very, very well done. Yeah. But even with that, there's still almost this transitioning between modernity and tradition because they have the traditional garb on but they still have like a suit pants yeah. and a shirt underneath so there's that mesh between the two that's taking place let's move on to the good the film was artistically done like it was shot in a four by three which is initially it's very different you can tell this is going to be like everything's going to be very significant the choices are going to be very significant the framing is going to be very significant it was also very grainy which made you focus more on the characters in the foreground who were less grainy i thought the cinematography was beautiful at times i felt like the film was more of an art piece than an actual movie movie Definitely. and i think sometimes because of that there was certain issues which we'll talk about when we come to the bad 
but just in particular the pacing of the movie was affected by that because there's some of these shots that are absolutely amazing but at times they take a little bit long and they slow the pacing of the movie down you could see it was definitely like 100 percent intent every shot mm -hmm. there was intent behind the camera was mainly was very very stationary you don't get much camera movement you get the slight panning up and down every now and then but it's almost like a fixed point like you're standing there watching everything unfold it's very very effective even our first introduction to the narrator we half see him from outside a room and we walk towards him almost and it feels almost like we're eavesdropping on a conversation where he's talking to other people and later on that shifts to the camera in the room with him so it feels like we've been invited in to partake in the story so that's it's very effective in doing that yeah i personally like the narration quite a lot yes. and i thought it brought something else to the movie because it brought us in it almost made us feel a part of the story and I really appreciate that because it feels very appropriate for the African oral traditions. Like as if we were sitting with this elder and the elder was telling us this amazing story of this town and of this woman and what happened. Just in terms of the town's history and in terms of the country's history. So I love that. It was very appropriate. I also really liked the colours. Because when they were inside, it was quite dark, but when they were more outside, there was a lot more light and it was very bright. And they also were very contrasting with the wardrobe. There were very nice bright blues and turquoise colours throughout the movie, whereas the lead character was constantly in like this black. So you could feel her despair, you could see her despair. The music acted on and built up on this despair. It was quite an all-round. Yes. The score was mainly composed using a lasiba, which is a Lesotho traditional instrument. <laughs> Being very unfamiliar with it, it is quite a interesting extreme instrument in this context it came across as very jarring as very moving yeah. and it definitely added to that inner turmoil that she felt because at some time during the piece when she was having particular moments of conflict within herself they played the lasiba and it just did feel a lot more jarring and i think it was even more jarring for us yes. because we're not familiar with the instrument at all and the very high pitch Yes. sounds that it makes it was very strange and it did get like you say during those moments of intensity it got more intense it got more frantic it got quicker and, and it really added to it the score was brilliant although jarring but so overall the acting in the movie was great mary twilas was superb she carried those deep depressed silent moments where she didn't need to overact she needed to almost look dead inside she's done she's finished and she did that so well and then in the next scene she was alive and crying out for death death <laughs> i think the narrator was also really good i enjoyed him quite a lot i also really like the fact that the movie focuses more on the elderly and the elderly experience yes. because i often feel like that is ignored because it's something that we don't like to think about. We don't like to think about death. We don't like to think about getting old and, you know, having everyone we love die. It's kind of scary. And so it was really nice that this movie focused on a very important topic that people generally tend to ignore. And I appreciated that quite a lot. It was handled very well. It's easy to mishandle this type of topic and to get absurd or to get... um realistic and it really made you think mm, it's good so it moves us into the bad and there weren't a lot of points that i thought were bad i think for me the subtitles was a big thing because they were just a little bit too small considering what a big screen it was so that was a negative they could have made it just a little bit bigger definitely and even on big screen it was small so you can imagine when you're watching it at home i worry it's gonna be too small yes. also like i mentioned the pacing was a bit slow if you enjoy going to a museum and you 
taking 15 minutes to looking at every single picture and studying it this movie is for you because every frame every shot is a still life masterpiece mm. if you want to walk through a museum pretty quickly you might find the pacing a bit slow i think it didn't need to be two hours long even though i was very amazed with the artistic style yeah. of the director i still felt like you know at times a bit sleepy <laughs> But I did enjoy the movie nonetheless. I think overall I would give it a 6 out of 10. i definitely also give it a solid 6 out of 10. So our overall rating then is 6 out of 10. Who would enjoy watching this movie? I think people who enjoy dramas will enjoy watching this movie. As William said, if you enjoy more artistic style movies and you enjoy looking at art and that kind of thing, you'll definitely love this movie. And I think people who are just interested in the history of the Sutu and Southern Africa in general will enjoy this movie, yeah. especially the African traditional oral storytelling that this movie captures so well. Let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments down below. Bye. Later.